Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ryan from RyanMcMillan.com and I'm back today with a new video. Um, you may have heard, um, it's been a buzz of the internet today, that uh, Google released their web browser today. Google Chrome is what they're calling it. And I just wanted to do a little video today to show you how to download and install Chrome. And I wanted to take you through some of the features that I thought were really cool. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I did was I went to www.google.com forward slash chrome. I don't think you need this other stuff. I think it'll just work with just chrome. Yep, that'll work. I'm going to click on download Google Chrome. And you're going to need to read their terms of service. And if you accept it, you're going to say accept and install. You also have the option here to help make Chrome better by automatically sending usage statistics and crash reports to Google. Um, I'd like to help Google out with this because I think that Chrome is going to be a pretty cool, pretty cool browser when it comes when it comes down to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna say accept and install. You don't have to click that though. It's up to you. So now what it's doing is uh, should be pulling down the uh, the install package and in just a second here. There we go. Downloading Google Chrome. So it, it has a built-in installer, so you really don't have to do anything, which is super nice. The Google Chrome installer should complete in a couple of seconds. There it goes. Now it's installing. There you go. Welcome to Google Chrome. Google Chrome is ready to complete your installation. Google Chrome will do these tasks. Import bookmarks, passwords, and other settings from Firefox. Add Google Chrome shortcuts to your desktop quick launch and start, start menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of here and we're going to say start Google Chrome. Alrighty, Chrome is installed. Now from your very first look at it, it looks pretty, pretty different. There's really not much to it here, but I can tell you there's a lot under the hood that a lot of people aren't talking about yet because I don't think that they figured it out. So the first thing where it brings you is the, the getting started page. And basically what this is, is it's your new home page. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you in these boxes here, your six or nine most visited websites. And every time you start up your browser, it's going to open those right up for you right away for your convenience. Basically, it's going to open them up and uh, you can just click on them and it'll take you right to those most visited websites right away. So you're going to go to them anyway. So why, does, why not have Chrome just open them up for you? Uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of just browse around. I'll show you a couple websites here. Yahoo. You'll notice that it, it it's very fast. Google built this web browser from the ground up, and they were really focusing on speed, and I think they've succeeded. Let's talk about some more of the features quick. Of course, it has the standard navigation links, the, the back and the forward, the refresh, the bookmark this page. It has tabs. If you're a Firefox or IE7 user, you're used to tabs. But these tabs are a bit different. Let's just go to Google here. The thing that's different about these tabs is each tab is actually its own Windows process. And what that means is each tab is independent of one another. You can kind of slide them back and forth, which is cool. You can even pull a tab out if you want to, and have it be its own window. You could, and then you could put it, I think you can put it back up there. Let's see. Yep, you can put it back up there. And each tab is its own process. Now I want to show you this, the new task manager that comes with Chrome. And basically it shows you each tab is its separate process. Now, if one of the uh, tabs happens to crash, it doesn't crash out the whole browser, it just crashes out that tab. The other thing that they, uh, they provide down here is uh, stats for nerds. Now, if you look here, it's going to show you a more in-depth summary of what's going on with the Chrome browser basically how much memory and shared memory and total memory and virtual memory and all that stuff it's using and then it breaks it down with the, the process ID numbers and the names and breaks it down even more. Um, you can get a shortcut to that, it's about colon memory. So that's that's included, the task manager, and that's new and that's really cool and I think that's one of the, uh, the main new features is each tab is its own separate process so if, if you're doing something on the internet and it crashes out your, your browser well, guess what? It didn't crash out your browser. It just crashed out that tab. So here's another really cool feature of Google Chrome. I'm at the Gmail website. And I use Gmail every day. That's my primary email account. I'd love for it to perform more like a desktop application instead of a web application. Well, Google's taken all of this into account, and I'm going to show you one of, one of the other really cool features of Chrome. So I'm going to sign in. 
then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make Gmail more like a regular old desktop application. And we can do this by clicking, clicking right up here. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say create application shortcut. So it recognizes that the, this is gears, the site is gears enabled, and it's asking me create shortcuts in the following locations, desktop, start menu, quick launch bar. I'd like to create one on my desktop for Gmail, so I'm going to say okay. And notice what it did. It took away the tabs, and it took away the address bar, and now I have an application called Gmail. And what's even cooler is, I'm going to close out, I have my very own Gmail icon on my desktop, which is going to perform just like a desktop application within, inside of Chrome. So I'm going to pop it back open here, and there you go. Notice again, there's no toolbars or tabs or anything like that. It's just Gmail which is pretty darn cool. Now if I want to, I can open up another instance of Chrome and you'll see here that it's already started placing my most frequented websites, uh, Gmail, Yahoo, and, and Google so far I've gone to, and it's placing them right there on the most visited page. So that's one of the other, one of the other features. Um, let's see what else we got. Chrome can import your bookmarks and settings, such as your favorites, your search engines, your saved passwords, and your browsing history from Firefox and Internet Explorer. Notice there's no search bar up here. It, it even says type to search. So we can search directly from what most people think of it as the address bar. Google's calling it the Omni bar, basically because it can do so many different things. And you could search for anything. So I'm just going to search for Lion McMillan. And it does a search right from the new Omni bar. You can see here I am, here's the blog. Anyway, um, you can do searches from right up here. So we could say uh, Milwaukee Brewers. And it will do, uh, it'll do a Google search, or it'll actually use whatever your default search engine is. And here's the Brewers site. So that's another cool feature of Chrome. There's a whole bunch more to it as well that I'm not going to get into in this video because I, I see it's getting pretty long already. A lot of people are kind of giving it a bad rap, saying, oh, just another browser, you know. But I think this browser has some real innovations, and just the just how fast it is is very impressive to me. The fact that it opens up everything in different processes, I think, is a key. So that's my little short video on Google Chrome. Uh, go get it. Go download it. It's completely free and open source. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing your comments on the blog at ryanmcmillan.com, and I'll talk to you soon.